So we thank all to the Lord tonight for uh, the few moments that we have got left here. And um, I know that when it touches 10 o'clock, 10 minutes to 10, I know that folks are ready to go home. But I know that you also have got very high regard and respect for the preaching of the Word of God. Amen. Now we read a scripture last night from the book of St. John's Gospel, chapter 15 and verse 3. Now we are clean to the word of the word that is spoken. And I'm quite sure that every one of us we like to have a bow. We like to feel very clean. And when we are clean, we are confident. Spiritually, when we are clean, we are very joyful. We are very happy in the Lord. Because it gives us that desire to relax in the Lord. And you know when we have a bath and we go to sleep, we sleep more comfortable. And uh, when you feel refreshed and nice, you feel like a brand new person. And so it is when we are cleansed by the Word of God, then we have got that strength in us and that desire to serve the Lord. So everyone will have to uh, leave themselves under the hand of God's words to clean us up. Every one of us, we've got that responsibility. You know sometimes when we're little children, we hate it the water and we always run away. I don't know if always run away. But I always run away, but you've got to be caught and you've got to be put under the water because it is necessary. And so every one of God's ministers that are given the duty and the responsibility to lead a people, we have got the duty and the responsibility to use the word of God that Jesus Christ has spoken for the purpose of preparing a people for the coming kingdom. And um, last night we looked on a number of things from the book of Colossians chapter 1 and if you would kindly let me run through a couple of scriptures with you and um, just move on to, uh, if I could uh, get the chance to conclude on the how of his resurrection. Colossians chapter 1. And... Um, if you don't mind me, turn the lights off that we can see clearly. Um, right. Um, Colossians chapter 1 verse ten, 9 first. 9. Okay, verse 9. Right. For this cause we also, since the day we heard, it do not cease to pray for you, and to desire that he might be filled with the knowledge of his will, in all wisdom and spiritual understanding. Verse 10. That he might walk worthy of the Lord unto all pleasing, being fruitful in every good work and increased in the knowledge of God. The first night and the first exhorter spoke about the importance of bearing fruit. And we know what it means to be attached to the Lord Jesus Christ. He declared in the 15th chapter of St. John's Gospel, I am the true vine. Yes. And we emphasized last night on the reason why Jesus said the true vine. He wants us to be aware of the fact that there are some vines that are not genuine. And if we get ourselves attached to them, we are going to produce some unpleasantness. 
So it is important that every child of God identify the true vine. The true vine produces some things which the preacher brought out on uh, Thursday night, Wednesday night about the fruit of the spirit. And now we are not talking about apples and pears and all those things. We are talking about the fruit of the spirit. What the person produces that is attached to Jesus Christ. And we don't have to fight with anybody. We don't have to fight with ourselves. When we see the product that is being produced, we can tell as to whether the person is attached to the true vine or the false vine. So we are not going to be in any confrontation with anyone. Every man's work is going to prove who he is. And the Bible teaches us that every man must know how to present his vessel before God. Every one of us, we've got a duty and a responsibility. And a whole lot of people are hindering themselves from being presented to God. The way that God desired to be. So let us be very careful. Every one of us will have to stand before God to give an account for ourselves. The devil can use us so busy to be taking care of somebody else when we ourselves need to be taken care of. And that is what we've got to watch out for. And every time the devil wants me to neglect myself, he helped me to see somebody else. And Jesus was able to identify them. And he gave teaching about those who are able with the beam in their eyes to see the mote in somebody else's eye. And they allow that mote with a blinded eye to make them stumble and stumble until they hurt themselves so badly that they may never have a relationship with Jesus Christ. Because they're always stumbling. Always stumbling. You know when people are stumbling, they always hurt themselves. And sometimes hurting themselves, they hurt other people. So here we would like to look on how the apostle desired that we should increase in the knowledge of God. Now 32 years approximately after the apostle Paul's is conversion. Encountering with Jesus Christ in such a positive way that he was declaring about the resurrection of Jesus Christ because the Lord had revealed himself unto him. And then, nearly at the end of his life, he was able to say, That I might know him. You and I, we fool ourselves at times and make ourselves believe that we know enough about him. Nobody can tell me anything anymore. But oh, this man that wrote so much, this man that touched the heart of millions and millions of people throughout the world, he said that I might know him. Oh, I thought you knew him, Paul. You have been telling a lot of people about him. But he wants to tell us tonight that we can't know enough about God. We can't know enough about Jesus. The more we know about him, it's the more we know. Oh, the writer said, more about Jesus than we heard. More of his holy will is earned. Spirit of God, thy teacher be. Show the things of Christ to me. What a whole lot for us to know. And the more we go into him, it's the more he's drawing us into him. The spiritual knowledge about God. It is so important in the life of the believer. When we are so disturbed and perplexed, when we know God, we are able to be stabilized because we know He's able to keep us from falling. All of the circumstances of life cannot stop us. Thank God for the man that knows that His anchor hold and grip that solid rock. Thank God for the man who can 
and say, nothing shall separate me from the love of God. Every one of us, we get up every day and we find so many things to hurt us. Hallelujah. Especially the times in which we are now living. But when we know him, when we know our Savior, when we know that he's here as a city of refuge, we can go to him. He is there to protect us. He's there to comfort us. He's there to strengthen us. He's there to uphold us. And therefore we will not fall. And sometimes the devil is so persistent that he will drag you down. But the Lord Jesus Christ will lift you up. Let's look at something that the Apostle Paul is saying in 1 Corinthians chapter 15. As we read this for our night's lesson tonight about the resurrection. There's something that came to my mind about the importance of the resurrection of Jesus Christ. How the enemy, 1 Corinthians chapter 15, and we pick up in verse um, 1. Pick up in verse 15 for me, please. Now we notice that the world in which we are now living, are seeking more and more to discredit Christianity. The world is seeking to make us look like we are wasting our time. God bless you preachers, you spoke on Wednesday night. The purpose why we have gathered together from time to time is to strengthen one another. Yes. Is to help one another to understand how close we are to the end of time. Yes. And when God reveals something to his servant, he does it for a purpose. Yes. Okay. Let's rush on very quickly on this here. Yea, and we have found false witnesses. Let's have verse 12, please, and see what he's actually saying. Right. Now if Christ be preached that he rose from the dead, how say some among you that there is no resurrection of the dead? But if there be no resurrection of the dead, then is Christ not risen? And if Christ be not risen, then our preaching is vain, and your faith is also vain. Yeah. And we are found false witnesses of God because we have testified of God that he raised up Christ whom he raised not up. Mm -hmm. If so be that the dead raise not. Let's go on. For if the dead rise not, then is not Christ risen. And if Christ be not risen, raised, your faith is vain. You are yet in your sins. Because he lives. Hallelujah. We can face tomorrow. Because he arose with a mighty triumph over his enemies. Those who try to discredit him. We've got a duty and a responsibility to highlight the risen Savior. To make the world know that he rose from the dead. Amen. According to the scriptures. Amen. How the world is going to know that. The world is going to know that because we are the branches that is attached to the vine. He declared that I am the true vine. Yes. Your father is the husband man. He is the source. And Christ is the one of whom we are attached to. And he declared that we are the branches. Yes. Glory to God. Now the branches are the parts where the fruit of being born. Yes. But it cannot bear the fruit by itself, except it 
where we understand how it works. And when they are claiming that we are on the way to heaven and they are attached to Christ, we must know what we are saying. Yes. And when you know that you are producing the fruit, you don't let nobody turn you around. No. You don't let nobody confuse you. No. You go on bearing fruits. And he said that your fruit should remain. Yes. Glory to God. And he went on to say much fruit. Much fruit. The more you bear, is the more you want to bear. I'm so sorry for those that are tired today. I'm so sorry for those that are fed up to bear. You know when the tree gets old, yes. can't go no more. No, no, no. Doesn't matter how you manure it, doesn't matter how you prune it, doesn't matter what you do, it has done its time. But when we are young in Him, yes. and He has given us that ability to produce because youth is a time when all the goodness is in it. You know when we start to get old, uh, wrinkles start to appear. <laughs> but when you're young, you're looking beautiful. You have got a lot of vigor. You got a lot of movement. <laughs> you know sometimes when we look and we see the way how some old people dress. <laughs> you see the seventy-year-old lady wearing a miniskirt. <laughs> Huh? When you look at her ankles, <laughs> you want to say to her, hey. <laughs> but when we get to the place where God has got that expectation of us because of the strength of our bodies, He expects us. Now let's look at the world in which we are now living. It is a changing world. It is a world that many of us are confused about it. And God is calling upon the preachers whom he has appointed. Jesus said, when you see these things happening, see that he be not troubled. Oh, a whole lot of us are buying up some stuff and putting it in the cupboard. Because we believe that there's going to be a time when we're not going to be able to get anything to buy. So we're storing up. So don't bother with that. Oh. Jesus said, see that you be not troubled. Yes. He said to his disciples, let not your hearts be troubled. Yes. If you believe in God, yes. believe in him. He is our counselor. Now, the fact about the resurrection, the disciples were prepared at all times to prove to the critics that Jesus has risen from the dead. When Peter went down in the book of Acts and he started to preach to those Jews, who did not want to recognize that Jesus is the Messiah, yes. is the Son of God. Yes. And they thought to themselves that they have killed him. Yes. Away with him. Why is it that Paul wrote like this? There were many that were saying there is no resurrection of the dead. Yes. Why is it that he said that if we say that Christ is risen and he has not been risen. We are found liars. Anybody call you a liar today as a preacher, you're going to feel hurt about that. So you got to prove that he is alive. Glory to God. And when we come together in one place, the Spirit of God brings our hearts together. Yes. You know, you will try as a human being to force people to do things. 
and you will fail at every time. You will aggravate people, but when the Spirit of God has rest in man's heart and bring him to the place where he is subjected to God, all is well. All the troubles will be over. The church will float along in harmony and in peace. I want to tell you that there are times that we feel that we can call members speaking to trash things out. Mm -hmm. But that is what the devil wants. Yes. All right. Nothing breaks up churches more than members speaking. Yes. <laughs> you know which members we want to get in touch with? The Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. When he is the chief administrator of the church, any meeting. They are in control. And I look and I saw after the day of Pentecost when the apostles they stood up and they declared the name of Jesus the resurrected Lord. They were from all parts of the earth. People from different languages. Met there to worship. When they met and they were in worship, the power of God fell. And a group of men that were not so educated, but they had a relationship with Jesus Christ. They were following the principles of Jesus Christ. They were following the command of Jesus Christ. And God was able to say, well done. You know, that is what we are struggling to do. Find ourselves in the knowledge of God's divine will. When we find ourselves in the knowledge of God's divine will, God will open the heavens upon us. You know, it's nice to have the songs and the exhortations and the prayers and everything. But if we go back to square one, God will shut off on us. But those apostles, you know, they were persuaded. They were determined. Because they were witnesses. They said, we can't help but talk about the things that we have seen. Let me go back and show you something about what happened on the day of Pentecost. Here. Those men that were worshippers, you know what happened? When they heard Peter, now we were talking last night about we've got to be able to hear. There are some preachers that don't like you to hear. That is why they ask you to keep making noise while they're preaching. But the Bible tells me that faith cometh to the individual. By hearing. Yes. And by hearing what? The word of God. Christ. The word of God. Hearing the word of God. Yes. God's word. Hallelujah. It is the word of God that will clean the man. Yes. It is the word of God that will bring conviction. Yes. So the word must be heard. Yes. And the devil said, well, you must rejoice. You must rejoice in the presence of the Lord. The Bible said there's a time for everything under the sun. There's a time to make noise and a time to be silent. Be still, God said. Be still I know that I am God. Those men that heard the word of God, they were able to ask the question. Acts chapter 2 verse 37. You know what question they ask? Men and brethren. What shall we do? Now listen. Remember they were worshippers? Yes. That's right. Is that right? Yes. They were worshipping. <laughs> Meeting to worship. Yes. And when the Holy Ghost spoke. Yes. They saw themselves yes. 
not yet ready. What shall we do? Because I heard the word of God. They were convicted. Yes. We call on everybody today to make noise. And we come and we go, we come and we go, yes. and it makes no difference. Folks start to make preferences to who they want to hear preach and who they don't want to hear preach. Yes. When the Holy Ghost is leading the life of a believer, when we are attached to Jesus Christ, listen to this song. So wash me now. Without. Within. Purge me with fire. If that must be. No matter how. It doesn't matter how you do it. As long as sin dies in it. I don't care who preaches. As long as he preaches the word of God. I don't go anywhere to hear nothing about anybody. Paul said, I want to know nothing about anybody. All I want to know about is Jesus Christ and he crucified him. Talk about God, but I can't say mine. Can't do it. Not at all. Talk about Rocky, can't say anybody. Not at all. But when you talk about Jesus, you want to hear me to get saved? Talk about Jesus. Somebody say, I feel good. I feel good, good. Every time I talk about Jesus. Not everybody likes to talk about Jesus. You know? When you say, let us praise the Lord, some people sit down looking at you. You know why? Because they're not attached to the divine. Rejoice. 
Amen. I went to a good friend of mine funeral service some years ago and the bishop came from America and saw all the ministers and all the congregation dressed in black and he came dressed in full white and he called me aside and he asked me why is it everybody is dressed in black? I said to him, it's a tradition. He said to me, in America, when a sinner man died, we dress in black. <laughs> because we're mourning for him. But when a child of God died, we're rejoicing. Listen, it's the dead who died in the Lord. Yes. From henceforth, they rest from their labor. God wants you to establish a relationship with Him. That whether in life or in death, you can say this word with my soul. Alright, I don't want to keep you longer. I think you should come back tomorrow night. And we'll finish up this. The resurrection of Jesus Christ is important. The world is trying to discredit our Savior. That we are supposed to herald and exalt. And every time that you have a meeting and you all keep it together, it's not to make a fool of yourself. It's not to make a mockery of the name of God. It's to make an accurate declaration of Jesus Christ. You are responsible. Amen. Hallelujah. Today I was going down the road. Yes, Lord. And the young lady in the car, she said, look, Pastor, look, look. And I didn't know what she was showing me. When I looked, I saw a lady with a microphone. And um, she had a speaker box on the floor. And another two persons stood at the bus stop with her. And she was hailing and hailing all three of them. What came to my mind, the idea is good, but the presentation has got to be right. You know, there are some of us that say that this, you know, for Jesus is precious in his sight. But when we go out and we present Jesus Christ in the public, in a nonsensical way, we are responsible. Our God is a dignified God. He's a holy God. He's a God that is higher than anyone you could think about. Therefore, whatever we are doing, we must do it that God will be glorified. Remember, I told you over and over, church is not a place to entertain. Church is a place where we need to worship God. When a man sings and when a liberal man does under the inspiration of the Holy Spirit, it must glorify God. Christ said that every one of us that is not attached to him. We will be cut off. And we will dry up. And men will gather it. Those of us that are from the West Indies, we know what it means to cook on uh, wood. <laughs> Sometimes when you're looking for real hard wood, you can find it. And you've got to look for what they call, what they call it? Brush wood. Brush, brush. Brush, brush. Brush, brush. Brush, brush. Or in other words, brown wood. Brown wood. Brown wood. Brown wood. Now, when you're a branch, 
You have to be very tender. But you are very important. Yes. But you will be very valuable as long as you are attached to the Bible. Sometimes the severity of the wind will blow you off course. That is why we've got to ensure that our anchor holds. You've got to ensure that you as a personal name hold on to Jesus. I've heard many times people are trying to say people that are drowning. And they themselves lose their life. If you're trying to say somebody and you find out that your life is going to be in danger, live. If you tell a brother or a sister that they're going wrong, and they fail to harm it. Don't follow them down to hell. The Bible says, be no partaker of other man's sin. You are an individual in the sight of God. The Bible says, every man will have to give an account to God. Every man. Of all the billions and billions of people that pass through this life. God in his wisdom know how to bring every man back. It doesn't matter what they do with the body. Whether, whether it is being cremated or eaten by animals, God has got through his great power. He who has created that man, he will bring him back. Yes. We must understand that and we must live that out. That's right. Let the world know it. With no uncertain terms that we believe that Jesus Christ is resurrected from the dead. And because he lives, we can face the difficulties that are coming upon the earth. Don't allow the state of the economy to perplex you. Don't bother pray about it. As a matter of fact, let me tell you this. The Bible says when a righteous man is in power, what happened? The people rejoice. And I'm waiting for the labor representative. They knock on my door a couple of times and let know that they called but no one was in. But I'm waiting to see them personally. And may I say quietly now that I'm not voting this time. All right. I would only vote for a man that say God. I get to realize yes. that. I cannot ask an ungodly man to represent, to represent me. That's right. <laughs> So much. I don't want to be dragged before the court for deterring anybody from voting. But I'm here to tell you that if you vote for the Lord Jesus Christ, he must win. <laughs> He's going to trash the liberals. He's going to trash the conservatives. And he's going to put the National Front to shape. And even the Labour Party that all of us have supported and I have supported many years. But never again. I don't hear them say God. No, no, sir. No. How can I say you determined my life? No, God. Israel had kings. You're good. You know, I know some of us will go quiet about this. You know, say it, yeah. Because we're scared, but I want to tell you this that there's going to be a time, and I trust God that nobody in this place will experience that time when that one word power comes in place. Yes, that's right. 
and it is fast approaching. Yes, sir. Yes. Yes. It is coming upon us, and it is so sad that we are not talking about prophecy. We are not talking about it. Right, right. I'm trying to talk about everything else, yes. but we are not talking about yes. the things that Jesus Christ said were right. coming before the second yes. That's right. That's right. That's right. So many of us are going to be left in the dark. Let us stand in prayer. Bishop McWhinney, I'm going to ask you to just come and stand with me down here, please. You know, we are going to take seriously all these people that are in this place today. They are God's treasure home. They are His value. Every single one, every day, every day is important. And God doesn't want us to neglect. He declared, how shall we escape? Not only the sinner man, but the man that's supposed to deliver the message. If you neglect, you're not going to escape. I'm going to ask you to pray for the preachers today that God will give them what it takes. Give the preachers of today what it takes to deal with the difficult circumstances of our church. I'm going to ask you. Eyes are closed. It is about in the sovereign presence of the great almighty God, the creator of this vast universe. Not only the creator, but the keeper of it. Life and breath the gift of God the Almighty to every master, nostrils of every creature of the earth. Our God, we are thankful to you because you set our souls on night. And the redemption of the soul is a precious thing, you said. Now hear me, mother's sons and mother's daughters in my presence. Some appear on the planet by date. This one would say, I've been here on the right at a certain time, the baby. And you're responsible for their coming in. And they have not known where they're coming from. They were told, they were told how they came. Every one of this under this roof tonight. I pray you, Heavenly Father, him that you've been feeding them, my God, the breath of life, food, to your bodies, and water, and liquid, and God and mighty to the body. And all that the body needs, and would have needed, you've given it when the formation of the child is in the womb, you put our eyes, and you put our ears, and mouth, and tongue, and hands, and feet, and everything. The child will come out here and find the uses of all these wonderful members and senses. You are God the Almighty who can reign over man. Amen. You send him on the planet. So we take from even the youngest of this, in, of this time, in this house, and to the wholeness. I pray you, Father, that you encircle the lives of these, they are yours. Send her to the Lord's the fullness thereof, the world and day that dwell upon the face of the earth. Amen. Our God, all things are yours, we know it. Many things are the vastness of the water is my God of the sea and the mighty oceans around the world and all the creatures that you're responsible for and every human being that moved upon the earth, God the mighty in every generation. You're responsible for everyone who have come and who have gone and these ones that remain even now. We pray, Father, under this roof, let there be something happen to men the sit the children of the known side, God, and even those ones who have not been yet drawn into your kingdom for safety. After seeing the things that are coming up on the earth, as Jesus says, as prophesied by Daniel the prophet, we stand in a holy place. Take them under the covering of holiness and righteousness. In the name of Jesus, that's the only way of escape. What is yet to come? When we should see the abomination of the desolation that should come on the face of the earth, we stand holy place. Our God sees everyone alive. We're not in the cemetery. We're not looking for the cemetery gate to be open for people who have come out of the cemetery to come into your house. No. They've got ready. Those that are alive, you're looking for them to come to your courts, Lord. And we thank you for a meeting like this. 
who have been able to draw your people much closer. God Almighty, to regenerate power in the souls of men. In the name of Jesus, and give them purpose for life tomorrow and the days to come. In the name of Jesus Christ, hear it down from heaven that God oh, be. Touch bodies, touch the organs that you have set up in the system. The machines that you place in every one of us bodies, Lord God, they, they carry the same, they carry the same duty in our bodies. And some of the duties are known to us, but they're working in carrying out their ministry. So we pray, Father, in Jesus' name, do a penetration, an insertion in the name of Jesus Christ, and everyone's life. Soul, spirit, and body, even tonight, bless everything that's been said and everything that's been done here in this place tonight. Your ministering servants now. We pray, Father, that you give them special anointing. That prevailing anointing. Only the anointing that will break the yoke and destroy the yokes. And so we pray the lives of your ministering servants, my God. Be quick and be risen again in the name of Jesus Christ to show this world that professes to be wiser than God to show them who is this Almighty God, the All Powerful. Bless your ministry, servants, and bless their ministry in the name of Jesus and the different vineyard. For we're looking for a mighty revival before the appearing of Jesus Christ. A mighty revival. We pray, Father, that the spring will break out and the water will run, the water of life. Come to the life of Jesus, for he gives his life for the four corners of the world and for every generation. Thank you for hearing our prayers and thank you for being here tonight and for all that's been said and been done. We thank you, Father, in Jesus' name, from the children to the oldest. In Jesus Christ's name, amen. 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 Before we begin to greet one another, Amen. I'm going to ask you tonight to bless the ministry with an offering. And as you come down this way, Amen. move back and pray. Don't bump into anyone. Just bring an offering now in Jesus' name. Praise the Lord. Let's have a song, please. Um, I give you falling in love with it over and over and over and over. 